Mr. Speaker, last month, President Obama came to this chamber to speak, inter alia, of a moonshot to cure cancer under the leadership of Vice President Biden. This week, the President announced specific plans to invest $1 billion to fund that moonshot. As a scientist and as the manager of large scientific projects, I'm naturally inclined to be skeptical of such bold claims from politicians. President Nixon famously launched the same war on cancer in 1971. Tragically, we continue to wage that war today. More recently, Andrew von Eschenbach, the director of the National Cancer Institute under President Bush, set the goal of eliminating suffering and death from cancer by 2015. We all know, unfortunately, that that goal was never met. So why is this cancer moonshot any different? Is this a moment like 1961, when President Kennedy stood before a joint session of Congress and announced his goal of sending a man to moon by the end of the decade and succeeded? Or is this a moment like 1971, when President Nixon declared war on cancer and failed? I believe that President Obama's cancer initiative will succeed. And the reason that it will succeed is brutally simple, science. Basic science and technology that exists today and did not exist 45 years ago. Science that was generated by decades of curiosity-driven, federally funded research, paid for by the United States taxpayer. There are many decades of federally supported basic scientific advances that will allow the Obama-Biden cancer moonshot to succeed. The ability to fully genome sequence individual cancers the ability to manipulate the genome and produce animal models to study and to test the basic mechanisms of cancer, and immunotherapy treatment, which was named Science Magazine's Breakthrough of the Year in 2013 and is when, has been capturing so many headlines around the world. Immunotherapy is an ingenious and revolutionary treatment that uses the body's own immune system to fight cancer. Since time immemorial, there have been stories of miraculous remissions of cancer when patients with apparently incurable cancers have experienced spontaneous and often complete remissions. These were often attributed to an act of God or perhaps the moral character of the patient. We now understand that for most, if not all of these remissions, that they happen when the body's immune system which has evolved over millions of years of combat with foreign viral and bacterial invaders finally understands the cancer as an enemy and has all the horsepower that it needs to attack and to clean it up. The immunotherapy now gives us the scientific understanding of how to mass produce those miracles. But this would never have been discovered without decades of sustained federal investment in R&D. And although the breakthroughs in immunotherapy rest upon a large pyramid of federally funded research, there are two parallel threads of federally funded research that directly led to this breakthrough. One was pioneered by Jim Allison, then of UC Berkeley, and Arlene Sharp of Harvard Medical School. The other was pioneered by Li Peng Chen of the Mayo Clinic. All three labs using federally funds, federal funds to study how the immune system is controlled and how it knows to kill foreign cells but not its own cells. This was a fascinating scientific question, but not one which was obviously relevant to cancer. All three labs were sponsored by basic science, peer-reviewed grants from the National Institute of Health, which I mentioned, Mr. Speaker, because of the way that peer review seems to be coming under attack by members of your party. In the 1990s, they were all working, these groups were all working on what was, became known as che immune checkpoints which are regulatory pathways to turn down the immune system to prevent it from attacking its own body. Even once this basic discovery was made, the established pharmaceutical companies would not touch it. But in 1999, Medirex, a small biotech in Princeton, New Jersey, funded by the National Institute of Health, took on the project. Ten years later, only after Metarex was well on the way of showing that their cancer immunotherapy approach worked in humans, it was purchased by Bristol's Myers Squibb for $2.4 billion. And now there are many drug companies developing checkpoint inhibitor drugs to treat cancer. 
as well as other immune system related treatments for cancer. So, as I mentioned before, the Obama-Biden cancer moonshot will likely succeed because of the technology and basic science that was generated by decades of curiosity-driven scientific research funded by the United States government. Time of the yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm the representative of U.S. citizens, but one that does not share your party's monomania about small government or the desire to keep small, our government small and indebted simply to pro provide low tax rates for wealthy donors, because Americans know that small government does not accomplish great things, like sending a man to moon or curing cancer. Thank you, and Time I yield